Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for April 1st, 2022. The last time you guys saw me, we were covering a tornado outbreak on this channel for over 13 hours. The day after that, the Storm Prediction Center decided to upgrade the severe weather event on March 31st to a 3 out of 5 on the severe weather scale for mainly strong damaging winds. During that time frame, I chased some of those storms and got some really nice footage. So what about now? Well, we could still have some patchy severe weather that could linger around before our next big system moves on through that could potentially create some issues. So you guys know the deal. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you want to help me get this out to more and more people on YouTube. It's free. It only takes a second to do and I post frequently to try and get information out on these meteorological events that could come on through. It's free, it only takes a second to do, and I post frequently to try and get information out on these meteorological events. Also, please be sure to share this video with friends, family, and on social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that we can try and get this video out to as many people as possible. And with that being said, let's get straight into it here with the simulated radar from the North American model. I'm going to be keeping you guys up to date with what the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlooks are as we move on through from day to day. So the lingering effects here of Friday, we do have a 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale lingering across portions of eastern Florida as well as into portions of northern Texas in towards southwestern Oklahoma. You can see the lingering effects of the storms over in towards portions of Florida continue to kind of just hang around. But the big thing here is that you can see a gnarly line that start to form over in towards portions of Oklahoma and Texas. So that's when the real event starts to really occur for you guys. Let's just zoom in on that event to show you what kind of happens here. You can see how a lot of these scattered showers and thunderstorms are kind of be ongoing here as I uh, actually make this video. So by the time you actually watch this, this will be more of kind of a Boeing segment. These storms will kind of create more of a damaging wind threat. And so that really won't be as much of a case here for some strong, severe weather for you guys. And so as we play this out, we can still see that we have a lot of that rain moving through the central portion of the United States. We also have a lot of snow over here that's starting to build up here. And similar to what happened in the previous event, you know, you can kind of see the pattern. If we backtrack here, we have one system over here on the eastern portion of the United States, another system in the central, and then another system that's starting to build over on the western side of the United States. So it's wave after wave after wave. You can see how similar to the wave that was on the east coast, uh, the central one starts to build some snow across portions of the Great Lakes as well. And that's something to watch out for portions of Wisconsin as well as areas near the Great Lakes like Ontario, Michigan, even towards portions of the northeast as well. And then you can kind of see during that entire time period here, from Saturday into Sunday, we have a lot of showers and thunderstorms over in the Gulf of Mexico. Look at this over here. You can see in the early afternoon stages of Saturday, this will really start to kind of move on through in towards the portions of the Big Bend area of Florida, north of Tampa and St. Petersburg. That'll eventually move off into their general area, though, however, in towards the late afternoon hours into the early evening general vicinity. And that'll kind of just be relatively consistent. You're going to see showers, then not as many showers, and then some more showers overnight from Saturday into Sunday as well. And because of that, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a two out of five on the severe weather scale for portions of central Florida. But then there's a couple things that I want you guys to pay attention to. You can see the western wave has now moved off in towards the Rockies, and then there's another wave that's building off along the west coast here. So as we play this out, you can see how the central wave starts to really build. You can almost see a bit of a low pressure system over there near the portions of the Canadian prairies as well as the northern plains. That counterclockwise spin continues to carry it over towards portions of the Midwest. And you can see there's a lot of snow up there for portions of the upper Midwest like Wisconsin, Michigan, as well as into Minnesota. A lot of potential severe weather that could linger on behind this from Sunday into Monday. And then of course, if you take a look at the Pacific Northwest now, you can see there is a lot of precipitation over there, whether it is wintry precipitation or just regular precipitation, there is precipitation over there. So let's zoom into that. Now the actual consistent flow of precipitation that moves on shore doesn't actually start until about the late morning into the early afternoon hours of Saturday and then eventually in towards Sunday, all right? The timing is above me, so you're going to have to subtract a couple hours from that, but still, there is a lot of flow that is moving ashore here sometime around the late afternoon into the early evening hours in southern Alaska in towards extreme western British Columbia, especially Vancouver Island. They're getting a lot of precipitation over here and then eventually off towards Washington and Oregon. But then a new band of precipitation starts to show up here 
from the late afternoon into the early evening hours of Sunday into Monday. That'll consistently be showing more and more flow, a lot of precipitation that continues to linger on through. And for much of Monday heading off into Tuesday, you still consistently get that precipitation. You can see here represented by the 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level. You can tell why this is called an atmospheric river because as this moves on through, the wind shear becomes stronger and stronger and it all gets consolidated along a, just a giant air current here. You can see right within here some very intense wind shear and upwards of 136 knots at the bottom part of your screen. That is some very strong wind shear that's moving on through. And that means that you guys are going to see some phenomenal wind gusts from this too. So let's play this out. The early afternoon into the evening hours of Saturday, you guys can get some wind gusts over here if you're towards portions of southern Alaska in towards British Columbia of about 30 to 50 miles per hour at maximum in some spots. 50 might be a bit of a stretch for this one, but you can see how that also reaches down towards coastal Washington and Oregon. But this is when things start to become significant here. This is the late evening hours of Sunday into Monday. Actually, we'll just call it the evening into the morning of Sunday into Monday. And uh, the wind shear becomes very significant. Wind gusts and upwards of 50 to even 60 miles per hour along coastal Washington and Oregon. Even portions of Vancouver Island also get some very significant wind gusts, specifically along the afternoon into the evening hours of Monday. And of course, even into portions of Washington and Oregon as well. You guys get some tremendous wind gusts as well. So watch out for that on top of the significant amounts of precipitation that some of these areas can get in upwards of five to even six inches of rain or snow, just total accumulated precipitation, if it all were melted down, is possible. So flash flooding could be a concern here for some of these areas here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, at that same time period, we still have our low pressure system that's moving on through, creating some wintry precipitation, once again, for the Midwest and Great Lakes. But then south of that, there actually is some severe weather that can form in the southern plains here in towards portions of Texas and Louisiana. And you actually see that form over here in a lot of these sporadic greens and yellows. And so that's something to watch out for. And as a matter of fact, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a 15% chance of severe weather for central and eastern Texas, as well as in western Louisiana. Now let's go back to that 500 millibar wind shear here real quickly, because I want to show you once again the flow of the atmosphere. And what this basically shows us is our jet streams. We showed you the atmospheric river. That is all a part of the jet stream right there. And so we can see how we have a big trough that's dipping on through the eastern portions of the United States. That's the reason why it's so gusty over here. You have some very strong wind gusts that we've been encountering for practically the entire day of Friday. That'll kind of linger on through in towards Saturday. And it's pretty cold over there too because you have a lot of cold air coming in behind this low pressure system from Canada that is kind of making this not very much like spring for most people. On the other hand, we also have a low pressure system that's developing here with a couple of these troughs. We also have two developing troughs over here across portions of the Rockies. Do they develop and do they turn into low pressure systems? Well, let's see. Oh, well, we do have one. There it is. There was our first batch of winter weather that moves on through for portions of Saturday into Sunday. And then our next one, our new one that's forming over here. Look at this, a little mini one over here and towards portions of the Northern Plains that comes on through and does the same exact thing. But there's your atmospheric river. Look at this. Very strong wind shear starting to move ashore and further and further inland. And that is going to eventually turn into a gigantic low pressure system. Look at this. Huge dip in the jet stream right there. Big trough. And across this general time period, there is going to be some severe weather across portions of the southern United States, extending all the way to the southeastern United States. And as a matter of fact, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a 15% chance of severe weather on Tuesday, as well as another 15% chance of severe weather on Wednesday. So another multi-day severe weather event from Monday, Tuesday, all the way into Wednesday, maybe off into Thursday if things continue to stir the way they do. But on the other hand, I mean, just look at this low pressure system, very strong low, big, huge dip in the jet stream here. And then eventually that's gonna move out and potentially another severe weather system after this that could potentially come from it. So let's see if the moisture does rise into some of this area and let's see, Sunday, ooh, there's a boundary that compresses everything. Look at that, 
pretty gnarly boundary that compresses everything to Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas. We have a lot of 60 to 70 degree dew points. Anything above 60 degrees is what you want for severe weather. And we have a lot of that in those yellows and oranges. And then of course, if we move to Tuesday, look at how ripe those dew points are. That actually is very, very moist. I'd say 60 five maybe even to 70 degree dew points across the board over in towards alabama you know mississippi georgia and even the carolina so that's something to watch out for and then potentially another band of severe weather that can move on through from wednesday into thursday as well with a lot of moisture being consolidated along this boundary here particularly a very strong cold front that could move on through. So definitely something to watch out for. And then a lot of cold, dry air coming in behind this, of course. Let's see if there's any cape over here for Monday afternoon into Monday evening. Ooh, there is a lot of cape over here and upwards of, I would say, probably 2,000 joules per kilogram again. So there is some widespread cape, definitely some severe weather that is possible over there. We'll continue to update you guys more and more on these events as we get closer and closer and get towards some more high resolution models to kind of pinpoint exactly as to what we could actually expect. But for right now, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have a video tomorrow morning, our lightning round video, which will be about a two to two and a half minute video that'll tell you as to what you need to know about the world, the weather, the news, and what you guys can potentially expect. It's basically the Cliff Notes version of what this video is. So if you're excited for that, please be sure to stay tuned as tomorrow morning I will have that uploaded sometime around 9 Eastern, give or take, maybe even a little earlier than that if I can get it done quicker. Uh, but once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family on social media. Also follow me on social media, link will be in the description down below. And I will catch you guys tomorrow night with one of these very similar videos that I do. So uh, well, I'll see you guys then. Peace out.